I do not support the marijuana recreation movement. Mm. I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. We know that cigarettes and alcohol kill more people every year than marijuana and hard drugs. More people die from cigarettes and alcohol than marijuana and hard drugs. We know that. I don't have a problem with marijuana <laughs> use for medicinal purposes. Somebody got cancer, somebody got some other issue, and the marijuana you know, eases the pain. I have no problem. I'm not speaking of medicinal. I'm speaking of recreation. And my objection has nothing to do with health, not physical health. It has to do with mental health and political health. The last thing you need to give an oppressed, lazy ass people is another distraction to keep their ass oppressed and lazy. So you got black folks, we ain't got no schools, we ain't got no hospitals, we ain't got no banks, we ain't got no supermarkets, we ain't got no ships, we ain't got no distribution, we ain't got no factories, we ain't got no common sense. And on top of all that, you're going to give us the right to smoke weed all day long? We will never get to where we need to be if you give us recreational drugs. It is a political sedative in slavery. The master made us go to church on Sunday. He didn't care about Jesus. But in church, they made you sing. In church, they made you clap. In church, they made you pray. In church, they made you dance. Do you know what the master was doing? He was making sure he exhausted all your revolutionary energy. So by the time you had to go back to the plantation Monday morning, you was happy again. He had to get that revolution out of you. He made you drink. You was made to get drunk during slavery to kill your revolutionary fervor. This recreation marijuana movement is a movement to kill the revolutionary passion of young blacks by hooking a whole generation on dirty marijuana. And the reason I say dirty marijuana, you ain't going to sit here and tell me, doesn't have a plan to taint the drugs that come into the black community. So that it affects black men's reproduction and affects black women's reproduction and causes cancer and everything else. If you think the food is killing us, if you think the food is killing us, wait 20 years from now when you start seeing the aftershocks of what the marijuana is going to do to us. This is part of a bigger plan that it got nothing to do with you being happy and high. And another thing, um, and you wrote a book too on, on this topic, a very extensive uh, book uh, concerning the medication of our children in school. Oh, and this, ah, many parents buy into it. Oh, yeah. Lord have mercy. What could you say? Let about me break that? it down. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. <laughs> ADD, mm -hmm. Attention Deficit Disorder, mm -hmm. was created out of thin air by the American Psychiatric Association mm -hmm. in 1980. Same year, the CIA dropped off crack. This drug, excuse me, this diagnosis was used almost exclusively on boys, almost exclusively at schools where they're being taught almost exclusively by white women. But guess what? There's no drug that can make you pay attention. So in 1987, they took ADD and put an H between the two Ds. And it went from attention deficit disorder to attention deficit hyperactivity Disorder. Why did they add the H? They added the H because there's no drug that can make you pay attention. Ritalin can't make you pay attention. Adderall can't make you pay attention. Concerta can't make you pay attention. Metadate can't make you pay attention. No drug can force you to learn about Christopher Columbus, Ellen Keller, or Anne Frank. Okay? So they said, we're going to make everybody hyper. Because the drugs only do one thing. Disrupt natural brain activity to calm down the central nervous system. So today, if your child just don't pay attention, he ain't hyper, he just don't pay attention, he still gets labeled ADHD to justify the medication, a $30 billion industry, all of which companies are publicly traded on Wall Street. Listen, there is no mental health in America. There's no mental health. There's only mental hustling in America. They make up labels because the labels equal money and it equals stock return for their investors. Here's the question I got for white America. If drugs are bad and you're locking up millions of black men for selling and using crack 
If it ain't good for adults, I'm assuming it ain't good for children. So why is it that you will lock up a black man 5, 10, 15, 20 years for selling crack, but you will take the same crack that sent his father to prison and you will give it to his son right here in the public schools of Philadelphia and call that crack Ritalin, call that crack Adderall, call that crack Concerta, call that crack Metadate, call that crack Cycler, and give it to the boy whose daddy got locked up for selling it, but you'll give it to his son so he can sit still long enough to be miseducated by lazy ass white teachers who don't give a damn about whether your son learns or not. That's why I titled my book, Psycho Academic Holocaust. Parents are made, being made to buy into or being seduced. They're being seduced. I love that Let's word. There you it. go. Mm -hmm. They're being seduced. Because when you go to the school about your child, they're not going to tell you that Ritalin kills the brain cells. They're not going to tell you that Metadate will mess with your son psychologically. He might start hallucinating. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you that these drugs mess with your organs, mm -hmm. stunt your growth, mm -hmm. cause tick disorder, psychosis, die of, uh, depression, suicidal thoughts. They're not going to tell you none of that. Well, we have some medicine for you. It has worked wonders for other boys in our school. And the mother, single, fourth kids, three kids. Most black kids are raised by the mother. Not because fathers are no good, but because all the fathers are in jail. And the white feminist movement, the white feminist movement has convinced black women that the black man is her problem. So not only is the father not there because the white man disadvantaged him, the white woman tells the black woman that he's a lazy, shiftless Negro and don't have a job because he don't want to work. And they say, instead of worrying about these black men, go get you a nice white man like Senator Kamala Harris wants to do with the White House. Put a white man in front of our black daughters and say, hey, you don't need black men anymore. Come get a white one. Just like the Meghan Markle marriage to Prince Harry. Same thing. Selling black girls white men. And it's all in the favor of what? Destruction of the black family. But that word you said seduced. They're seduced to put their children on these drugs because they're not told the truth. Seduction is the opposite of truth. Seduce or the truth, one or the other. And the moms don't know. But here's what happens. They give in to it because they think it's going to help, right? And it does. He now sits still, but he's also sleeping all day. You follow me? All day. Now he ain't learning. But the teacher don't care because she don't care if he learns. She just needed him to act right. Public school is an extension of the prison system. And just like with any other inmate, what is the number one responsibility of the CO? To monitor behavior. What do they do in public schools in Philadelphia? Their number one concern is what? Behavior. They don't care if your son can learn. They don't care if he's smart. They don't care if he's gifted. We don't give a damn about that. We only want him to control himself. Public school and prison are one in the same. Instruments of control. The only difference is the prison got beds and the public school don't. So hold on. She gave us son this medicine. Now he don't want to eat or he overeating, gaining too much weight, losing too much weight. Now the mother says he ain't taking that no more. Then guess what the school does? Child Protective Services, DHS. I would like to make a report. We have a young man in our school, eight-year-old Randy Jackson. He's been diagnosed ADHD. He's been prescribed Ritalin and Concerta. And we found out today from him, because we don't teach our kids to keep their damn mouth shut. We found out from little Randy that his mother hasn't given him his medicine in over two weeks. This is an anonymous report. Next thing you know, they're knocking at the mother's door, investigating her. And guess what they do? They're going to threaten her. Put them back on them drugs. If you don't put him back on the drugs, we're taking Randy. But guess what? We're not only going to take Randy. We're going to take Rashida. We're going to take Raheem. We're going to take Raquita. We're taking all the kids because that's what they do. They don't just take the one. They find you unfit and they take all your kids out your house. It's called medical neglect. That's the new word. I want everybody to hear this. Medical neglect, failure to give your child psychiatric medications for a diagnosis that you can't even prove exists. Do you know you can't even prove ADHD? Did you know you can't prove conduct disorder? Did you know you can't prove oppositional defiant disorder? Did you know you can't prove mild mental retardation? You can't even prove it. It's an idea. Let's not stop. You can't prove an emotional disturbance. And guess what else you can't prove? 
You can't prove a reading disability and you can't prove a math disability. And guess what? Most black kids in special ed for reading and math, they don't have reading and math learning disabilities. They got lazy disabilities. They asses is lazy. They don't want to learn. They don't want to apply themselves. And they got a mother and father at home that's just as lazy as they are. That's why I want my own school. It won't be no special ed, won't be no Ritalin, won't be no ADHD, won't be no conduct disorder. So the parents say, well, Dr. Umar, if you're not going to have special ed, if you're not going to have a program for the learning disabled, if you ain't going to get an ADHD boy's medicine, how are you going to deal with this? Real simple. For the ones who can't sit still, we're going to work their ass so much they'll be begging for some downtime. You understand? <laughs> Because we black men. You understand? We know how. Oh, you don't want to sit still? Come. We're going to clean up the whole neighborhood tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you over there? You got a reading disability? Well, I got good news for you. Your ass come to school on Saturdays, too. You got a math disability? Your ass is in school right after church. After white Jesus, you got these white textbook pages. <laughs> and how much you want to bet? After two weeks. Oh, after two weeks, I promise you. I won't have a reading disability. I won't have a math disability. I won't have no damn mild retarded kids. There won't be no ADHD, no conduct disorder, and no dope. Because the hustle that our kids run on their mothers, they will not run it at the Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, RBG, International Leadership Academy for Pan-African Excellence. Our motto is, we have been average too long. It's time to be excellent. And the other aspect of that is they also bribe. Yeah, you can get a check. You can get an SSI check. Tell me more about that. Okay. SSIs for people with impairments and disabilities. Mm -hmm. So what they say is, once we put them in special ed, you can take this report to the SSI office and get him evaluated again by the SSI psychologist. So you got the school psychologist in the school district that put him in special ed. But now you got to get evaluated by the Social Security Administration psychologist to determine if you really have an impairment. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get your little $650 a month. Is that worth it, though? Is $650 a month worth your son walking around for the rest of his life thinking he can't be as good as other children? And let me be clear. In my professional opinion, 20 years, I would consider myself an expert. In my professional opinion, the worst outcome or side effect of special ed isn't the special ed, it isn't the low outcomes, it's the child's self-esteem. His belief that he can't do as well as others because the adults in his life have convinced him that he has a disorder that can't even be proven to exist. The learning disability is a goddamn lie. So when parents, and, and, and I'm hoping there are especially women, especially mothers. Um, I'm hoping there are some out there listening to oh, they this. And I'm they hoping listen. that those who may have been approached with, we, 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 we diagnosed, there's some problems with your son or your daughter, and we've diagnosed them with this, and then uh, we need you to come to the school. Mm -hmm. what, what would you tell them? I would say black mothers and fathers, but especially mothers because they're raising most of the children alone, mm -hmm. need to learn to three word phrases. Mm -hmm. If they can learn to recite these two three word phrases, they can use this one or they can use that one, they can save their kids. Mm -hmm. The first one is no thank you. <laughs> okay? The first one is we don't know how to say no to white people. Mm -hmm. Listen, Same. I was on the phone today helping some parents out. Mm -hmm. First grader in special ed for a reading disability. Six years old. Wow. How the hell you got a reading disability? That's six! Your ass just learned your alphabet. So guess what I asked the mother? Why did you decide to let a six-year-old child get evaluated by white people for special ed? Guess what she told me? The teacher thought it was a good idea. What did you think? You his damn mother. Didn't you carry him? She said, I didn't think he needed it, but the teacher did. So you see what's going on? We subjugate our own mind and opinion to what white folks want to do with our kids. Most black parents give me the same answer. Why did you do this? They asked me to. 
So if a white man pull up and tell your ass to get in the truck, you going to get in the truck? Yes. It's like soon white folks walk in, we lose our mind and start doing whatever the hell they want us to do. Learn how to just say no. And we don't know how to do that. Furthermore, we live in Philadelphia, right? right. One of the worst academically performing school districts in the country. How can you come to me to tell me my son got a learning disability? When he goes to a school that has been documented, don't know how to teach. This school ain't made AYP since AYP started. And you want to put him in special ed. No, we will put your ass in special ed. That's what we need to do. Put the teachers in special ed and put the parents in special ed. You know what they're really doing? They're blaming the kids for the faults of the adults. I have never been in a meeting in my life where somebody said, is it possible? I've never heard this in my life when I'm about to say it. I've never heard it except from me. Is it possible that there's nothing wrong with Randy? Is it possible, Miss Slurbanowski? Is it possible, Mrs. Silberberg? Is it possible, Miss Rabinowski, that you can't teach black children? Is it possible that you're the problem and not Randy? I've never heard nobody blame the teachers. They always blame the kids.